guys, this is Megan. Today we're doing something a little bit different. We're doing an inside project. And so I wanted to show you my fireplace. I am painting it, not quite a whitewash, but not a full paint coverage either. So this is my old 70s red brick fireplace. And I've been giving it a little bit of a makeover. And I wanted to show you how I'm doing it and what products I'm using to finish it. I have been using some white chalk paint to paint over it. So let me show you which product I have. I am using this Rust-Oleum Chalked in Linen White. It's an ultra matte paint. Uh, it was, I think it was $15 on Amazon, super easy. Okay, so I am mid process. Yesterday I did just about half the fireplace with the kitchen sponge. And the problem was that it was falling apart and starting to get flakes into the paint. Thankfully the the brick is so porous and the things, I was able to just come back and vacuum off those little flakes. So it was no big deal, but I didn't want to keep using a million sponges. So then just a few minutes ago, I tried this little dish rag thing and that did start to tear apart. It worked all right, um, but it didn't hold the paint very well and it would have worked, but it was also falling apart. So then I decided to actually just try the paintbrush, which was wet. I had rinsed it out after using it to... Uh, pour some paint into the cup and so then I rinsed out the brush and it was a little bit wet and so I just decided I'd try that and so I actually like the look of the bricks that are more covered up you can still see the textures through the paint but not all of this open red so I'm going to turn the camera around and show you which sections I like better and how the paintbrush is actually working just fine and that's a lot easier than something that falls apart so I will be switching to the paintbrush to finish this up I'm doing a little bit of a second coat up on some of the top parts and I'll show you what I mean all right so this is where I am these few bricks down here I actually did with the rag I like the more covered look so these ones here next to it you can see as well and I'm gonna see if I can show you so this middle section in between where the mantle sat you can see that there's a lot more red showing through. This is what I did with the kitchen sponge. And so there's a lot more red showing through here. It's a much lighter color. And I found that going back over in a second time, so I know it's hard to tell on camera, there you go. So the first one, two, three, four, five rows, I've done a second coat on. You can still very much see through the paint, but you, I tried to fill in most of the red spaces. And then the next few rows are much lighter. So I'm actually going back over and doing it like the top. I like that look better. And so using the paintbrush is actually making that a lot easier to fill that in. So if you like the lighter colored look where you see more of the red showing through, the sponge worked great. And then if you like it with the more covered up look, then the paintbrush was working just fine. I didn't want to start with the paintbrush and get too much paint on the brick and then have to try to figure out how to take some off. That would be much more difficult. You can see here down around the edges of the fireplace, I actually did use the sponge and got it a little thicker in these areas as well, just by kind of blotting it into the red crevices. So you can use either one, but the sponge fell apart and the paintbrush is not. So uh, I am gonna end up doing a second coat on most of this. And so I need to finish that up, but at least I get to use a paintbrush. And I hope that I showed you the difference so you can decide which one you like for yourself. The first step was actually to do the grout, and I had already done that, so I didn't show you in the video, but all I used for the grout was a small craft brush, that's maybe a half inch brush, and just the straight can of paint. So I just used that to go and paint all the grout lines. And actually, I had the can of paint open longer than I thought I would, so I would recommend actually pouring some in a solo cup and not leaving the whole jar open while you're working so it doesn't get thick on you. But super simple, just takes a little bit of time to take a small craft brush and use that to fill in the grout. All right, this is my finished fireplace. I got the second coat done. I've been able to put the hood back up and I refinished the mantle. It was, it had a more decorative edge to it and I just added this thick edge to it and I was able to sand, stain, and re-polyacrylic it. So um, I will show you the products that I used to do that and talk about whether I would use them again, which ones I liked and which ones I didn't. And uh, I will also turn the camera around in just a minute and show you the finished fireplace. I'm really happy with it. It was a super simple project and it was, it was pretty cheap. So I used the paint and then a clear coat on the actual brick itself. And then I used a stain and a clear coat for the mantle. And so each jar, uh, each quart of product was about $15. So about a $60 project was all that it cost to totally change the look of the fireplace. 
So here is the finished fireplace from a little farther back. You can see it up and down. And so I really like that you can still see the texture of the brick, but that you can't see any of the red showing through. That's the look I'm going for. I did complete it just using the paintbrush and it worked wonderfully. I didn't have any issues and I didn't have to deal with the sponge and the rag that were falling apart on me. So let me get closer and show you the products I used for the fireplace itself. I used the Rust-Oleum Chalked Linen White Paint and then I used the Chalked Matte Clear Coat. So I'm not sure that I would use them again. The, I really like the color and they were easy enough to use, but the chalk paint, which probably is a chalk paint characteristic, I've never actually used chalk paint before, the chalk paint was really thin and actually washed off. And so then that's what made me have to do the the clear coat. And I guess that's probably always true, but I didn't know that. And so when I saw online, a lot of DIY people use this particular paint for their fireplaces. So that's the one I picked. And then as I was working with it, I could have taken a wet washcloth and washed the entire thing off, which I guess was a good thing. So if I didn't like it, I could have probably taken most of it off. It was so easy to remove that when I was putting the clear coat on top of it, I feel like the clear coat itself was pulling up paint as I worked with it. So I'm not sure that I would use them again. That was kind of a frustrating thing to deal with. Thankfully, uh, as the clear coat went on and I feel like it pulled up some of the paint, I was okay with that look. It didn't, it didn't change the look of the fireplace too much to be a problem, but I, I don't think I would use it again. Uh, and in some places where I guess I got too much clear coat on, which was very difficult to tell, since it goes on milky white and the paint was white, I couldn't see how how much clear coat was in spots. And there is a little bit of yellowing. I'm gonna see if I can show you. Yeah, I think it comes up a little bit, but there are some spots here that are a little yellow. Now I figure with kids and life and usage, it's gonna get dirty anyway. And if you're any further away, you cannot tell that it's yellowed. So I'm all right with it, but I don't believe that I would use this product again. So I, I don't necessarily recommend these. For the mantle, these are the two products I use. I use a Verithane water-based wood stain in dark walnut, and I really liked this. It did not smell like typical, typical stains do. It went on really easy. It cleaned up with soap and water. It's a whole quart instead of those little tiny jars, and I am really happy with that product. I would use that again in a heartbeat. To put the stain on, I actually use these sponges that I bought at the store while I was buying the stain. It's kind of, uh, it was just like a big washcloth, but with a sponge inside of it. And that made it really easy to apply. And then I didn't even have to worry about washing it out. I actually just wrapped it up in a plastic bag in between coats and then reused it again. And I didn't have any issues. And then this is Verithane's water-based polyurethane that went on top. I have used Minwax's polyacrylic before and I'm happy with that. I don't have any complaints about that, but I feel like this was an easier product to use. I didn't get any issues with streaking or bubbles or anything. I I think that the dark colored stain is pretty forgiving on that, but I was really happy with this product. Again, very low odor. I actually did it inside the house and it was not an issue. Um, it did not make it where we had to leave the room. So I'm really happy with my two Verithane products but I probably would not use the Rust-Oleum products again if I needed to. Here is a closer look at the mantle. You can see the stain here, and this was just a one by three board that I brad nailed to the front of my mantle. It does give me a slight lip underneath. So you can see that there. The original mantle is the top and bottom there, and I just added this board on the edge. It was very simple to do. It was quick and easy, and I'm really happy with the product that came out. Thanks for watching. We hope you enjoyed this video. It's a little bit different from our usual farm projects, but it is one that is something that I've been wanting to do here on our farm and it's winter time. So I don't have any baby animals yet so I can work on indoor projects until they come. So uh, if you like this video, I'd love for you to subscribe. And if you've ever done a project like this and you want to comment down below, have you ever tried out those Rust-Oleum chalk paints and what did you think of them? Maybe uh, it's a user error on my part, but I was pretty unhappy with them. Well, we hope you enjoyed it and we hope to see you on the next video and we will see you again next time.